Hello everyone, welcome to the Dev Method. Today we're going to be talking about Enzyme Ingest and testing in React, the basics. So in our last video, we had an introduction to just getting set up with Enzyme in your React app. There are a couple of steps to follow to be able to be set up with the project. If you'd like to take a look at that again, um, you can go ahead and click the link in the description or somewhere here on the video so you can see how to get set up if you want to try it on your own. Uh, but when we're taking a look at the Enzyme framework that lives on top of Jest for React, uh, there's a lot of different helper methods that can help us test uh, whatever component actions that we have um, or maybe properties that we have. We can introspect on the te uh, text that's there. We can take a look at how many children a particular node has. Um, so if you take a look at uh, one of the first links in the description, it's talking about the shallow rendering API. So there, there are actually ways to do this within um, React itself without Enzyme. Enzyme here is really just a helper to get you to the things that you are looking for. Uh, quicker. So you write like instead of five lines of code, you write like one or two. Um, there's a lot of different examples out here on the site. So I just want to start off with some of the things that I've uh, made in this demo project. So one of the things I made um, was this app test. So I have quite a few tests in the app. Um, and the other thing I made too was a tile test, made a couple of those just to show you exactly what that means. Um, so in order to get you uh, acquainted with this particular project, I just want to explain it for a little bit. So the window, my um, Chrome window is actually on the right hand side here on the screen. And it's the Create React App like uh, boilerplate page that they, that they give you. But then I added in um, these elements here. And these elements, when they're clicked on, uh, they increase their number and they all do it separately, so they all have their individual state. Um, and I hard-coded it to just three, so you can get an idea that each one is separate, and that there's no dependency on one or the other. Um, so in order to take a look at tests for this app, um, I'm, I'm not necessarily gonna look at the click handlers, because we can do that in a late, later video, um, but I wanna look at simple things like the text or how many things are there. Um, so I wanna show you some of that kind of stuff right now. And uh, just to give you an idea of where we are, let me inspect this for us. Yeah. So um, this is actually our app link. This is our paragraph. And then this is our uh, image, which I don't think we use. Here's our header. Here's the div class. And then the root is just the entire container for uh, the React app. Um, down below is where I made a nav, and then I put a UL in it. And I put absolutely no styling on any of these things, but you can see here the div tile. That's actually the tile component. Um, so with knowing this, this is the structure of the application. Um, so each one of these things is a tile. So let me show you the implementation of tile so you get an idea of what we're working with here. So this is tile, and what I have set up right now is a div that holds an h1 and a p tag. So I don't necessarily have to have this be an h1, but I can make this just strong, right? Strong. Okay, now if I wanna see the update on the right, I just have to do um, npm start, because this app has just been running even after I quit the command line part of it. Let's give it a second, it'll reload. There we go. So this is the initial state of the app. And then as I click on any of these elements here, that's when they transform into numbers and start counting up. So notice the uh, what I call the tile here is not actually keeping the state. Uh, the state's actually held with its parent component, which right now in this case is the app. So I have this app here that has a constructor to set up the initial state, which is what you just saw. And then I have this method or this function 
um, on the app component that will update the count. And here is the whole structure of what you saw before. This is where we map all of those tiles. And then we have an on-click register to the handler, which is the update count, which passes in the event itself, but then also the index of which um, it uh, is in the list. So this is just a boilerplate startup of getting something as an example set up in React. Um, I just want to show you some of the tests that I came up with with the tile. So if anything was to go wrong um, in our rendering of the tile, uh, we would know after calling shallow. So the nice thing about uh, shallow is that it actually doesn't render your child components of this. So for example, when I do the app test and I say I want the app to be rendered, this is normally what happens in React. But if I want to do a shallow render, uh, we actually can change this up. Here we go. And there we are. So in doing this line of code versus what you just saw a second ago, instead of doing this, you can do this. This will render those child components and everything in that tree. Um, this will not. Uh, it, it's actually really helpful for testing, not necessarily because of speed or performance, although that may be a factor. Um, you're really just focused in on just this component itself and not the responsibility that the other components actually have. Um, so that's what I'd recommend if you're gonna be using any kind of the enzyme uh, wrapper functions. Um, this shallow actually does return something and you see it right here. It returns here we have an app, right? Or the subject that we are testing. So this might as well be just called uh, subject. So that's the subject under test. And then we have um, this method we're calling for find. Uh, if you guys have used any of the uh, jQuery uh, methods before or those functions when doing web development, this is going to be very familiar to you. Uh, but the whole point is that this would find any and all p tags um, inside of the app component. And in this case, I'm testing the length of how many there are. And I, I'm testing and asserting that the length is only just one, uh, which is true. And the only way to really prove that is to write a test. And I'll take a look at those test results and just do npm test it's going to run the test in both app and tile Oop, I have some failing ones in tile but I just wanted to show you the app test here see all of them passed so I know that this is true there's other uh, methods you could use too like um, here I'm finding the nav then I get the element and then I get its type, right? So it's kind. Of, this is kind of like not necessarily a useful test here. We're just checking the type of the element is a nav because that's what we told it to find. Um, so get element is just getting one when there's one expected. But if we did get elements, uh, plural, it would get all the elements. So this is another way to just see if there's actually one there. Um, I don't necessarily need to check the type, but if this was to fail, then the test would fail. Um, let's take a look at the tile test. So the tile test, I have a very similar one. It renders. Now I'm asking, does it have an H1 with find? And then I say it only has one H1. So each tile only has one H1. Um, so this will actually fail now that I've changed the implementation. Instead of an H1, I said that it was strong. So let me put this back as an H1. Okay, as I save, it'll re-render the test, and now my tests are passing again. So this is actually an interesting topic uh, to bring up here, the fact of refactoring 
Um, so refactoring is sometimes a scary word in software development, especially if you have clients or stakeholders that you work for or like a boss that you work for. Anytime you say the word refactor, um, to them, it's everybody has a different experience. Some people have uh, really bad experiences with that. Some people have really good experiences with that. Um, some people don't even know what it is. But when I'm talking about refactoring, I'm talking about um, when you come into a piece of code and, well, in this situation, um, I'm talking about not necessarily rewriting the entire application, but just taking parts of it that don't necessarily help you to uh, step B, like you're at you're at point A and you want to get to step B, or uh, maybe it's later on in the project so you would consider it as step B and you want to get to step C. Um, you want to be able to refactor some of these things uh, in your application, but not necessarily break the functionality that's currently there. So this is a great way to have tests that help you constrain your behavior and your expected results so that you can see what it is that needs to be updated. So as you update features and as you refactor some of your code, you're going to update the test as well. So if I was to um, take a look here and I have a bunch of H1s and then somebody tells me later, no, 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 H1s aren't going to be good. They're going to look so huge on the page after we change the CSS. Um, or maybe that's just not necessarily the best practice you want to go with. Um, why don't we just change this to strong? So if I go into tile, change this to be strong. Or maybe uh, something else besides an H1. Right? Now to rerun the test, it'll tell me what's broken. Here we go. Right now there's a test that says has H1. Um, and that is not true anymore. So let's take a look at this test and see how we can uh, correct it. So if I look at the uh, line that was run, this is the line that was run in the test project. It was run at line 11, okay? Let's take a look at that. Yep, line 11, that's what I was looking at a moment ago. Um, now it expects the value to equal one, but it got zero. So that's really good output for us. Um, I like that it's red because it just stands out as not being something that is desired. It's like saying stop, take a look at this code here. Notice also it even points out the method that throws the assertion. So in this case, um, line 11, but then the two equal is what's actually failing here. If it was something before, like you know, length wasn't part of this, or uh, if title was like a misspelled, the little carrot arrow would actually be right there. So um, let's go ahead and refactor the test. And what I'm saying is I'm looking for strong. Okay, let's save it. Let's see if that got fixed. Aha, so that one did get fixed. So now instead of has H1, it really should be has strong element. Again, I saved, so it'll rerun the test again. Now the next test that fails is empty h1 with props missing. So very good test name because it's telling us what we refactored is what's actually breaking the test. So, so empty strong, I'll put it in double quotes here. Or maybe I'll just do this. Empty strong with missing props, okay? And all I'm doing is testing to see if I can find an h1 get the text from that, and then see if it's true or falsy. So if it's truthy or falsy, that's a discussion with just JavaScript and the idea of comparing two objects or two values. Uh, we're not gonna go into that into this video, but if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments below if there's enough people that wanna know about that, we'll talk about it. So the tile here says find an H1. So that's really where our issue is. This is supposed to be a strong. And then find the text inside that. And then just tell me if it's there. Because if there is no text in there, this will not work. So here we go. All right, so now we have another test that we have to look at. Uh, this one's on line 25. So line 25, it says expect the title of title nine to find the text and to be falsy. So this is a strange one because what we're saying is um, put it in the text and it's a, just a number 
And so look for the text and it shouldn't be there if we pass in a number. So it's really just expecting just a string. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is the best kind of test, but if you're not using uh, prop types in React, this could be something that would help you in a test to just double check that at runtime, we're not passing in native values of a number, that we're passing in actual strings. Um, so this is, this is a, uh, a test that I will let you decide whether you wanna go forward with it or not. And, and that's something that you use or that's your strategy. But notice here, I didn't necessarily say that I made a local variable, I just put it right along inside the test. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because it's not easy to read. So usually the thing that you're testing is called the subject, right? And so this would be the subject. Okay, so you're testing the tile component. And then you wanna find something and get its text. You might say that this is the actual output. So the subject, find the text. That's your actual. Now, just because I rename them doesn't mean it's gonna actually fix this test. Really the issue is we're just looking for the wrong element value here. So strong. Here we go. So now all of our tests pass. So we took a look today at the find method. Um, we actually looked at the text so we can get some of the text out of here. Um, we looked at this option of like to be falsy. There's also um, one here called to equal, right? So the expect part and these to something, um, that's a lot of the jest functions. So if you wanna look those up online, that will be the way that you compare your objects or like make these assertions to see what you're expecting from your actual output. Um, but then everything from shallow is giving you this like uh, this wrapper to then call functions like find or call text on it after you find something. So find's a very common one, it's gonna find something right away. Uh, if you wanna take a look at just one more last one, that was get element. So we can actually get the HTML element if, uh, you know, if we have one of them, we use get element. If we have multiple that we're looking for, that's get elements. So that's plural. So thanks for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, just provide them below. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content or take a look at some of the history of the videos I've made in the past if you want to learn a little bit more. Um, so thanks for joining me. See you later.